When I was about seven or eight, I was obsessed with felt octopus plushies. Very specific, I know. But I watched every single tutorial online, tore up old socks, and begged my mother to buy me the materials to make them. Unfortunately, I couldn't, and this clumsily made felt ball behind me was the most I could muster. But why was it so clumsy? Obviously, it was because I was unskilled, but why? And what does that have to do with the future of sustainability? Before we look to the future, we must first look to the past, the Victorian era, specifically. To the untrained eye, the Victorian era seems like a backwards time, for anyone that wasn't a baron or viscount, with plague and improperly plumbed toilets running rampant. Yes, exploding toilets were a real Victorian issue. We see the era in its finery and foppish frills, through dreaded and unreadably florid literature, and through pictures and photographs of frowning faces, all shrouded in a miasma of misery. But I see something different. I see the future of sustainability. Since my cephalopod obsession, I have massively improved my sewing skills, also branching into dress history, which is not only the study of what we wear, but how it is worn and utilized. Your clothing tells a story, and dress history is seeing how that story relates to clothing as a whole and the world around you. I'm here to share what lessons I have learned from the past and how we can all apply it to our daily lives. In the Victorian era, there were two reasons why many grand gowns were lost. The first reason is the passage of time, as natural fibers degrade and rot, as well as many gowns simply being lost. But the second reason is the historical practice around fabric. In the past, fabric was very expensive. It was hand-woven, difficult to find, and clothing itself was much more laborious to make. And so clothing was made to last and worn until it could no longer be worn. And when it couldn't be worn, whether because it no longer fit, had fallen out of style, or any other reason that you can no longer wear something, it was either given to the second-hand clothing market, which it were, in which it was passed down from the original owner to their servants or siblings, and would make its way down the rungs of the social ladder to the rag pickers, who would collect what was left of the garment and take linen products to paper mills in order to be made into paper, and would use other materials in order to make usable cloth, um, similar to diaper cloth. But gowns could also be refit they could be uh, made into a new style with new trimming and ribbon, or made into an entirely new gown. Behind me, we can see a few examples of repurposed 18th century gowns. The two right leftmost images are of gowns that have been remade from 18th century ones. We can see that in their fitting, it is atypical for the era in which they were made, and in their pattern, which by the time that these gowns were remade, would have been atypical. But the most interesting example is the rightmost image, which is actually a gentleman's waistcoat of the late 18th century, which has been refit and reshapen into a woman's bodice almost 100 years later in the late 19th century. This is all a very long-winded way to say that there was a sustainable system of clothing in place from the medieval era until the early 20th century. What happened? Well, fast fashion. Quickly summarized, fast fashion is our modern practice of clothing with clothing being made cheaply, poorly, and with the intent to be remade, although it was pioneered in the 19th century, specifically in the 1870s. Fast fashion allows us to keep up with the newest fashion fads, but often relies on unsustainable labor conditions for garment workers. Online retailers like Fashion Nova often resort to sweatshops and child labor in order to keep up with their supply. And while we do often hear about unsafe labor overseas, even in LA, some factories illegally pay as less than $3 an hour, which I'm sure we all know is significantly less than minimum wage. Many people advocate to slow down fashion by buying from sustainable brands or thrift shopping, but what I believe is the secret is also in the past, mending clothing. Now, mending clothing is difficult because in the modern day, sewing skills aren't often taught. And I, in fact, I doubt many people here even know how to darn a sock. Darning is the practice of weaving new fabric into old fabric. It's typically used on socks or on denim products, but it can really be used on anything woven. In fact, darning was a widely taught skill to young children of almost all social, social classes in the Victorian era. But how did this change? How did this fundamental shift in the American curriculum occur? Well, we should first look at home ec. 
Home Ec was established as a class in post-World War II America. This is an era typically marked by a return to tradition, which we can see in how the class was marketed towards preparing women for the home, which while we can disagree with, we have to admit that this class taught necessary life skills and would definitely be use useful today. The class skyrocketed in popularity and spread throughout the country until the 1980s and 90s, when with technology becoming a greater part in our lives, as well as social and political changes in American society, the class was deemed unimportant and replaced. It's such a shame that such important skills haven't been maintained and such important skills aren't being taught today with the responsibility of learning falling more onto the individual rather than on the school system as a whole. I showed you my clumsy attempt at a felt octopus earlier, and while it definitely isn't the best, I'm still so proud of it. It was the first thing I made, and I've improved so much since then, and you can too. Learning sewing is such a simple skill. You can do it through online tutorials, YouTube videos, and obscure blogs, and it's such an easy skill to practice. It's so useful. You can find anything around the house to mend with your skills. Here are a few images behind me of altered clothing. In fact, the image on the right is of an alteration made, which is something a little more advanced, but can definitely be learned very simply with modern technology. Ultimately, we need to change our perspective on clothing. We need to change how we perceive clothing. Clothing shouldn't be something cheap and disposable and thrown away. It should be something that is cherished and cared for and lasting as long as we can make it last. The theme this year for TEDx was planting seeds. And while we can literally plant seeds and clean up beaches to help our dying world, we need to become more sustainable and eco-friendly in our own lives. And the very basis of that is in our clothing. We can sow the seeds of sustainability today for a brighter and greener future for many generations to come.